Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends, these are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Well, I am so excited about my guest today. I think you guys are going to be in for an awesome treat. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about him, and then uh, we got to welcome our sponsors. So, my guest today is a Frenchman living in Vienna, Austria, which I think is so fun around the world. He says he loves cheese and comes from a monolingual French family who's still wondering what's wrong with him moving abroad, learning five languages, he's fluent in all of them, and running an online business rather than getting a job. So I'm already excited just about that little intro. I think you guys are going to love this. And so before I get him on here, I do want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors. So. Today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photography. If you are a creator needing post-production, consultation, or promotion, Walt is your guy. Whether short films, YouTube films, photography work, or a new headshot, he can help you find a solution to match your needs. To learn more about him and his work, you want to go to photosbywalt.com. We also want to give a shout out to Chris Klo of Upbeat Media Productions. If you are in need of turnkey special event production, Clo is your go-to. To learn more about him and his work, you want to go to UpbeatMediaPro.com. You would think I'd have that all figured out by now. I say that so many times and it's such a mouthful, right? <laughs> so anyways, my guest today, I'm going to try to get this right, is Angèle Prito. Am I close? Pretty close. Amazing. Okay. You're doing All right. Great. Is a French learning coach and online entrepreneur. Through his coaching and courses, he helps English speakers learn French fast, become fluent, and live their best international life. After a master's degree and 15 years of teaching and coaching French learners, he's still obsessed with improving his methods. He loves seeing his students learn faster and better and create wonderful lives for themselves. So welcome to the show. I am so excited to chat with you today. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to be with you. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And I think I we talked offline, which was kind of fun. We got to chat a little bit before we did this, which I think is always amazing because I get to learn a little bit about you guys before I kind of dive in and do some more research. And so I know mm -hmm. I shared with you that I did study some French. I'm nowhere near as good as you because it's your language. But uh, language. every now and then I can... I can read a little bit of it and kind of make out the context of what I'm reading. So I'm just excited to have you here today. I want to say welcome. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to be here with you. Awesome. All right. So I thought what we would do, because I think I remember you sharing with me that you were working in tech or IT. You were doing something completely different before. Am I correct? Yes, I was a support manager. I was responsible for the um, customer support department in a startup before I created my own online business, yes. Very cool, very cool. Were you gonna say something else? So, I thought you were gonna say something there. Uh, I was just thinking I need to update this uh, little bio that I sent you because actually it's a new year and it's been 19 years now. 19 so years? Start, yeah, but I, I, I did start teaching French a long time before I worked in tech. So there was just a span of time in my career where I was working in startups and in, in the tech industry, um, but I was always at least on the side teaching with French. So I never Doing really stopped awesome. teaching French. Isn't that funny when I read these bios? It's I always crack up at these because it's it's fun when you're on the other end and you get to listen to the bio. I think it's kind of fun, but it never fails. There will be that one where somebody goes, I need to update something in that bio. Like something's different. You know what I mean? Like it's I like something realize, we do. But time goes by. We get old. It's terrible when we get busy, right? We get busy in our stuff yeah. and then we're like, hey, you know, but hey, either way, 15 years, 19 years, you've this been doing it a while. Just sounds good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So I, tell me, like, how did this come for you? So did you always decide like you were, as a child, you were going to be an entrepreneur and you were going to go into this or did you just all of a sudden start feeling this like passion and calling to do that? Or was did you find a need with people that you knew? I definitely had the entrepreneur bug when I was a child, you know, I was always trying to like, you know, sell stuff and things, but it was extremely unappreciated um, or even disparaged in my French background. And in France, it's just not like in the US. In the US, there seems to be a lot of uh, being an entrepreneur is a good thing. Starting a business is more like something that's encouraged. There's definitely a big entrepreneurship culture. In France, not that much, and in my family, not at all. Like, as you mentioned at the beginning, I'm the black sheep of the family. 
I am the one who just decided to know, like, I mean, I, I, I can run my own business. It's okay. I got this. I don't have to have a job, you know? Good for you. Yeah. You're like the rebel, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, am too. I get it. So am I. I'm a rebel too. But I did grow up in an entrepreneur family. But it's funny because I've always kind of done things on my terms. I've always had to go a little bit against mm -hmm. the grain, you know, so to speak at our lingo here that it's just, I can't follow like, what everybody does. I've got to just be a little bit different and do my own thing. And, yes. and I would say on my terms. So good for you. I think mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I you're... agree. I think it's definitely better to be working on your terms if you can. It's more fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely. You get to call the shots. You can decide. Yeah. You know, I would say it's not like as entrepreneurs, we just say, you know, we don't have to put in the work, right? Like we have to do the work, but we do it the way we mm. want to do it, when we want to do it and how we want to do it. You know, we get to decide versus someone saying, this is how you should be doing everything along the way. Yes. I mean, definitely, like, like as you mentioned, I also have an, a master's degree, which is in teaching French and, and creating training courses uh, in French as a foreign language. If I did not have my own business doing that, I don't think I would be able to have a job uh, where I would actually apply you know, in my field for real, not just teaching, but actually creating training courses and so on. It's, I don't think there's any job that really, but the, probably it exists, but there are a lot less jobs than graduates where you get to do that and really do it completely, you know, from A yeah. to Z. Yeah. And you're kind of a one of a kind. There's not a lot of this out there, really. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in the world being a French learning yeah. coach for adult that's, English speakers that's so awesome. who are yeah. individuals like not because there will be a couple of people will do it for big companies okay. like, for example French companies that uh, will hire abroad but like for example in tourism um, Accor for example is a big French hotel group and they tend to train their staff to uh, work with French tourists uh, you also have some of that in the medical industry because uh, in some countries like in Spain and in the Netherlands for example you tend to have French people who go to these countries for some medical procedures that they can't have in France. So they will train the staff to speak to the French patients. But outside of these really big companies and very specific fields, no one has actually thought, hey, you know what, I'm going to take my training and I'm going to adjust it for every single client that I have. Like, that was my idea. It works. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. And so how do you find, I'm just curious, I mean, this is like, my brain is going right now. So how do you find your clients? Do they come in from, are they finding you or are you finding them? They are definitely finding me. So I'm doing my best to have content up on YouTube, to be found on Google. I have a lot of clients coming from Pinterest as well. And awesome. definitely people stumble upon something that I've created, you know, a pronunciation course on YouTube, or I have made a couple of videos that are about celebrities. For example, there's one I'm very proud of with uh, Anthony Blinken, who is the... Uh, okay. American Secretary of State, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and he speaks French very, very well. And I made a, I made a video breakdown of like the French hacks that you can learn from him. That makes wow. it easier for you to learn French. I'm very proud of this one. And a lot of people just, you know, book a, a free call with me, an application call. And I'm like, oh, I found that video and I, I think it was amazing. Or I, I made one with Jodie Foster that people quote a lot as well. And it's really uh, helpful to have video content online, especially if mm -hmm. you can demonstrate your expertise because then people hopefully will find you, you know, you got to do a bit of SEO work and, you know, like, but if you can be helpful to your clients through video content, that will be a great way to attract them. Yeah. And you have great content. I have been on your YouTube page. I did go through there and look at some of your Thank stuff. You. So you have really good content on there and there's a lot. It's not just yeah. a small amount. You've got a lot of really good stuff on there. I mean, in a week, it will be the anniversary of my business, seven years. Okay. So in seven years, I've had a little bit of time to make yes. content. Yes. I, I have. I would definitely want to make more because you know you can always do more and do better. But yeah, I've yeah. been doing it doing it for a long time. And I can tell by listening to you and just from this conversation and our previous conversation, you're passionate about what you do, which I think is so important in our line yes. of work because. We're all, you know, all of the entrepreneurs that I bring on this show, I mean, if you've looked at any of them, it's just there, you get some that are kind of the same, but there's a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. And the one yes. universal thing I say about everybody that comes on here is that they are all passionate about the things that they do. Like they love, genuinely love what they do. And it's so important in what we do. I think if you don't love it, you cannot stick to it. Right. I, I've never had a job for seven years. 
yeah just didn't happen you know like i've been i've had a lot of teaching jobs but they were not always in the same place they would have been here and there and yeah you have to be passionate about what you do especially if it's your business otherwise you quit because yeah. it's also not easy right so right if you don't like it and it's hard just don't do it <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, just forget it. Move yeah. on, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Do, do something so, else, you know? Yeah, find something else you like. So what led you yeah. to Austria? What Did you just decide to move there or better opportunity? or? Ooh, uh, actually, I moved here twice. Uh, the okay. first time I moved, I moved here when I was 25. Um, okay. I found a job as a French teaching assistant that was just right after I got my master's. And I became a French teaching assistant in uh, some high schools in a small village in the mountains. Okay. It was okay, but I absolutely hated being so isolated in the mountains, but I loved Vienna. So the year after that, I made sure to request to be, uh, you know, um, transferred to Vienna so I could still work and, and live here. And I studied in Vienna five years, you know, different things happened. I ended up uh, working in the tech industry, as I mentioned, and then I lost that job because the tech industry is what it is. Uh, then between that time, I had met my ex-wife. She was my girlfriend at the time, gotcha. and she was from Berlin. Okay. And she told me, oh, you should come to Berlin, better opportunity, great tech scene, which, by the way, that is absolutely true. I mean, there's a much bigger startup scene in Berlin than in Vienna. So I did that, and I did indeed find a job that was better. Um, it was, it was, I didn't get promoted because it was a different, different company, but, you know, a step up. Yeah. So I became the... Um, support manager for that company and i only stayed there for like a few months like six months i think because the, the um the leaders uh, of this company had an incredible skill where they managed to convince everybody that they would be better at running a business than they are and yeah. even the, yeah. the, within the one year after that almost the whole team left and was like oh we're just gonna start our own thing um because they were just extremely convincing and like, yeah, like if we can do it, you can do it too. And to be honest, it's something that I will say about online business as well, but it wasn't like that. It was more like, it was clear that what they were doing was nonsense. Yeah. Know, to, put yeah. It, to put it mildly. Um, but I had missed a key element that meant that they were quote unquote successful and it would be a lot harder for me when I would have my business. Um, they had 20 million in funding. I had zero. Gotcha. So that company never brought in a euro or a dollar or any currency, uh, but that was fine because their business model was just throwing money out of the window because the investors were just giving it to them because gotcha. tech works like that, apparently, sometimes. Okay, yeah. So I had to learn that the hard way. I was like, oh, well, you, what do you mean I'm a nobody and I'm not getting funding and I have to make it work on my own? <laughs> I do not like that. Um, but yeah, I mean... Seven years later, our business is still alive. So I think I did yeah. fine. You did good. Yeah. Because I think that that first, I think that seven year mark is kind of the mark. You know, like if you make it that long, because most businesses go under way before that. They I mean, most are dead in the first three years. I think 90% yeah. are dead in the first three years. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So you've got the fighter spirit. I can tell. You always know when you meet people and they've got that. I can do it. You know, and it's funny. I was talking to someone yeah. yesterday on the show and you know, I think I grew up in an entrepreneur household, so I kind of understood. I always joke about this feast or famine lifestyle. I just came mm -hmm. to understand the lifestyle of an entrepreneur. And so right. I've always really looked at this from the angle of that there's always going to be a fire burning, right? There's always something that you need to work mm -hmm. on. You're either really good at selling yeah. and you need to work on your marketing or you need to work on your clothes. There's always pieces that need to be worked on. But your job as an entrepreneur is to one, understand that, and to two, is to navigate around it. Just assume there's going yes. to be something that you need to deal with, and your job is to figure out how you're going to get around it, right? Yeah, you, absolutely. You can always do better. I do find also that in my business, my job uh, running an online business as a coach is also to make things easier for myself. Right. Like, not really assume that it will always be super hard because if, if you go from this perspective, yes, it will always be super hard. Sure. But I really like to see it as building. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm building things for myself. And now I have, I, I can only work a few hours a week if I want. You know, a lot of the work that I do is not absolutely necessary. It's just building for the future, sure. building a better structure, doing, you know, doing things to improve things. And because I've been doing that for a number of years, now... My, my job, my work is a lot easier because I have templates for everything. I have already like an onboarding process for clients. 
I have already um, in my group program, I have a workshop library, which, you know, I launched that program in 2019. And at the time there was zero workshops in it. I just like launched it. I was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. There will be these workshops and you're going to help me. You're going to vote for which workshops you want to see. I'm going to create them. And after three years, um, wait, three and a half years, um, I have a big workshop library now with, I don't know, like maybe 25 workshops in it. So of course I can tell people, right. So now this is where you're at. Uh, I've introduced group classes now as Mm -hmm. part of the program. So every Sunday we meet and the people, the, the, the clients um, or the the students speak French to me, I give them feedback and I can tell them, okay, like the point where you're at, it's this particular workshop about verbs or even like this section in that workshop and I recommend you watch it next. And that just, that really, really helps because a lot of things is built. So I would definitely encourage anyone who wants to have an online business to think of how can you build something that will make things easier for you later. Also because you know, make no mistake, everything will be harder than you assume at the beginning. Absolutely. It's well, the typical I'm, entrepreneurship yeah, yeah, <laughs> situation. I'm with you. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on all of that because I'm in the process right now. I'm working with a mentor and I'm trying to move. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of, you know, face to face coaching right now, obviously right. through Zoom and other methods, but I'm working more. I'm building a program out right now to move mm-hmm. that to an online space. And so, Yes, I'm with you. The idea, obviously, is to make your life easier. I mean, that's part of it. And I say, you know, as much as I love coaching my clients, I mean, I really do. It takes a lot out of me because I'm very vested yeah. in them. And mine, and I always say my coaching is like therapy. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm always tired when I'm done. So, yes, I, I am with you on right. that. You know, how can we make things easier, get systems in place so that you can make things mm-hmm. easier for you down the road? So absolutely good for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, And once you once you have a good process with one on one clients, it's relatively straightforward to turn it into a program as well. Yeah. But if you don't have a process and you have to build your programs from scratch, it's so much harder. Right. Right. With you. Good. Good job. I love it. All that you're doing. It's great. It's good stuff. I had another question and then I just totally like blew my mind away because I was listening to all that good stuff. So anything new coming up for you? Are you creating it, creating anything more that you sh- we should be looking for? I definitely have some ideas of things I want to create in the future, but that's not really coming up soon. So right gotcha. now, really, I'm on the uh, French learning coaching. So if you're an English speaker or you speak English, even if it's not your native language and you want to learn French, you definitely can contact me. I have my website, frenchfrance.net. I'm sure you'll have all of that in the show notes. Yeah, and will. yeah, uh, really, those are the two things I do. I do one-on-one coaching with clients and I have my group program. Everybody who's a one-on-one coach, she also gets access to the group program because I like to, you know, keep it together. So if you have hours with me, like once a week, you can also have the group class every Sunday. Or for much cheaper, you can just join the group program. And that's really, those are the two things I do. I try to, you know, change it up, add things and so on. And I find it's just, it's the way it works. Yeah. One day I would love to create a coaching certification to like help people become language coaches because that does not exist at the moment. And in fact, there were yeah. no French learning coach before I came up with it. There were That's a couple awesome. of people who called themselves an English coach, you know, for English as a second yeah. language, but there was no one for French. And I was like, I can do it. You can you know, do that. I basically Absolutely. Created, I created that profession. So I could also create a certification for, you know, coaches of other languages and, you know, like not just like being like, oh, okay, this is your degree. You can be a coach now, but, but actually building your business. Yeah, as a language coach, right. because there are lots of people who teach online who make very little money because they don't mm-hmm. know how to position themselves and build something that really showcases their their expertise. And when sure. I tell people that I'm I teach French online, they're like, "Oh, that's really tough. You must not be making a lot of money." Yeah, like, oh, I'm well, okay, actually, <laughs> but <yeah>. well, <laughs> yeah, that's more to it. Right, right. So this just brings me to the next another question I just thought of. So you speak five languages. What are what are all these um, languages? Yes, six. If you, you six, if you okay. Want to count them all, <laughs> if you count the native what? language as one, that's six. Yeah. Right, right. What else? In English, obviously. What other languages are you fluent in? So yeah, French, English. I have been living in German-speaking countries for ten years, okay. eleven years now. So German, Spanish, and then we have the two that I don't really practice. Those are the four I practice on a daily basis because my gotcha. girlfriend is Mexican, so you know. Okay. Um, then there's Portuguese, which I learned. I don't, I don't think I'm really fluent right now because I haven't been practicing it. And the last one is Esperanto, which is a man-made concerted languages that was created for international communication. 
Interesting. I, I'm impressed. Absolutely impressed. That's a lot of languages. <laughs> I know a few people in my, I have a few people I know in my space that can speak a lot of language. I was friends with, friends with a girl that actually, I think she lived in France for a while too. And she could speak French mm-hmm. and Spanish. And she had like several different languages. And it's so funny because I would go with her and she'd start speaking Spanish to somebody. And then if she mm-hmm. ran into somebody that did another, she could, and I'm like, how many languages, get, how, how do you keep them all separated apart? You know, like, um, yeah, I, I'm impressed. So good yeah. stuff. That is that is the reason why I don't speak Portuguese on a regular basis because I yeah. have a really hard time keeping them apart from Spanish. And I'm like, yeah, okay, at some point you have to make a choice. There are languages that are useful for your daily life, and there are some that it's okay to keep them on the back burner. And if one day your life changes and you need that language again, you can bring it on. You can pull it. It's out, a lot yeah. easier to bring a language back to fluency if you've had it before. That's something I tell to my clients because I have so many people who have studied French in school, but I've forgotten right. everything. Or even people were like, oh, I was fluent at some point, but I've forgotten everything. Like, yeah. it's not really forgotten. It's just that you haven't been using it. So your brain was like, okay, this isn't useful. I'm not going to keep it active. But you right. can make it come back a lot more easily than if you had never yeah. learned it. So it, it's never, never really it. forgotten. That's good. But I'm impressed that you can speak all those languages. It, and you can, mm-hmm. I mean, if you pop up in a different, I mean, if you come to the States, you could probably do okay with Spanish and English because we've got a lot of that going on. And I had a, um, my grandmother, my dad, on my dad's side was from Germany. And so when we were growing up, oddly enough, my dad never really spoke German. I'm sure when he was younger, mm-hmm. he probably did in his house. But, you know, we were growing up, I would hear German language because my grandmother would speak it. It was so funny. I would, I think I laugh about this now. She's no longer alive, but I still laugh about this. We always knew when she was talking about people because we could understand nothing. But when we heard names, people's names being dropped, we knew she was talking about somebody. So, um, so yeah, so we've had a little bit of, uh, languaging in our house too. And, um, Mm -hmm. so I think that, I think that's awesome and, uh, great, great, uh, skill to have, I think. I think so. I mean, I, it's also like my work to teach it to people. So sure. Yeah. You got to know it. So very cool. So as a, a tra- going from, you know, you've had a lot of transitions, you've moved and you moved from, you know, oh, yeah. kind of a corporate thing to this online. What do you feel like has been probably the most challenging thing for you making that make and it can be any transition. It doesn't have to be a specific one that you're, you know, like the entrepreneur space, but any transition, what do you feel like has been the most challenging for you? It's, Definitely a tough question because I've had several challenging transitions, yeah. as you mentioned, but definitely going from being an employee to being a business owner. A lot of people say that starting a business is a crash course in personal development, and that's absolutely true. I, I would say it's challenging in a good way because it's stimulating, but yeah, it's a situation where you have to learn a lot, learn to pivot fast and like, you know, test your ideas if you're wrong change and you know change only in a certain way it's just the first few years of building a business it's a lot harder than you expect yeah and that's also probably why most businesses are dead after three years because people don't expect it to be this difficult like at the beginning i did not expect that building a business online is so much harder than building a business in real life most people will assume that like somehow an online business is easy because you have your YouTube ad from like whichever coach was like trying to sell their training programs, like, yeah, do it easily, like no work at all. And I was like, no, if you want to build a business that really works, it has to be tailored to what you can do. It has to meet a market need. You also have made it particularly hard for myself with having my clients being very far away from me. I mean, yeah. try to convince a stranger on the internet to send you money. Right. It's not right. easy. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Like I know there are scammers all over the world who just like do that as a carrier, but I don't think they scam very intelligent or very uh, aware people. It's probably mostly people who are not very aware of how the internet works, or like they lie to right. them or something. But sure. you know, I also don't think they have a high success rate. Maybe like they speak to a hundred persons and they manage to scam one. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not an easy job. And so like, yeah, of course, like I have a legit business, so I have certainly a much higher conversion rate than they do. But you know, first I have to find people or rather have people find me and then, you know, like have them trust me enough to become my clients. And it's just not easy, especially when you're starting. Now, of mm-hmm. course, like as we said, I have a ton of 
content on YouTube and people see that I'm the real deal. I'm, I exist. If you get on the call with me, I look the same as on my videos. I'm a real person, right. you know, and yeah. it's relatively easy for them to find my credentials, find out who I am and just like make sure that, yes, I do deliver what I say I will deliver. I have testimonials on my website and so on. But all of this takes time to build. And at the beginning, you don't even know what you really want to do. Like, even if you know, like, okay, I want to teach French, it's still not a radio positioning. There are right. hundreds, maybe thousands of people trying to teach French online. Yeah. You have to no. be more specific than that. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, I agree with you. I have a client that I work with that she's originally from Russia and she's living in Spain and she, all her businesses are online. I've actually been working with her for about three years now, since early when the pandemic hit. And that I remember her telling me that's one of the most difficult things, more so in the States than in other parts of the world, because here she's like, she says, you have to have the we a website because she's like there, we just send money and we don't think anything of it. But here, everything's done through a website. And, and I said, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, yeah, I think, I don't know why, because you're right. I don't, there are scammers, but I don't know how, I mean, how many people get scammed? I don't know. You know, like it seems like you could do enough research on some of this stuff to make sure, but I think everybody's so skeptical, right? And so when you have to get into that place, yeah. they want to see websites, they want to see that you're credible and all of that yes. stuff. But that was also, one of the things she The she thing with scammers about. is that they almost always impersonate someone else. Right. So if yeah. they if they successfully pretend that they're someone else, then they, they, they can use the credentials of that person. But that yeah. person has built the business for real. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or they're a celebrity or something. Right. And they're if out you're there. anonymous, no one knows you, you're going to have some work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you for standing strong because I know that that's, a, that's not easy. And every day, I feel like yeah. every time I turn around, I go into my social media platforms and somebody's pretending to be somebody else in an account. You know, it's like every time yes. I, I get a friend request and I'm looking and thinking, what is this person doing? I know this is not a legitimate account because I'm friends with the person already. And then there's another mm -hmm. account coming through, you know? So I can imagine yeah. it is a real, a real thing to have to deal with, but good for you for sticking around. So, all right. So what have you learned about yourself in this journey? Oh, wow. So much. <laughs> what have it's I learned about myself? It's a loaded question. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's very, it's very loaded. Um, I think I've learned a lot about the way that my brain works and the way that other people's brain works. I definitely know that I'm not neurotypical now. It's not something I knew before I started. Okay, it's good. Um, yeah, that's, that's important. I think it's really important to know your own functioning if you want to run a successful business because mm -hmm. otherwise you're gonna burn yourself out trying to do something that's unnatural to you instead of trying to do what comes naturally to you. So that's super important. Um, I've learned a lot about my limiting beliefs and you know, I've been working on mindset a lot so I had to undo a lot of things, um, particularly yeah. with regards to money or with regards to work. Mm -hmm. We tend to have, for example, hustle culture, which is good and bad at the same time. Because for me, I, for a long time, I thought that there was like a lot of virtue in just working hard for the sake of working hard. Right. After I was burnt out, I had to reconsider my beliefs. And... No, actually, there's a lot of value in making as much money as you can with as little work as you can and in like mm -hmm. being thinking obsessively of how you can leverage what you do and perhaps some things you have, like, you know, a degree or a platform or whatever you can use, which gives you more reach than you would yeah. have just with hard work because hard work is sometimes necessary, but I think most of the time it's it can be... It's good if you're trying to, for example, gather data or find something in particular or just, you know, find the things that works. But once you have found the thing that works, like if you're still working super hard all the time, you're doing something wrong. Probably 80% of what you're doing is not necessary and you want to shut down, to cut down yeah. on the work that you're doing just so you can do more of what's more efficient. Yeah. No, that's good. I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I think we do. I think... I, and I thought that was just our culture, you know, and I don't even know, I feel like now it's not even really a thing about working hard anymore because you keep hearing about this quiet quitting stuff and everything now. So I don't even know if that is, but I grew up thinking that too. That was how we were raised that yes. to work hard. Right. And, and there was like some kind of glory in that at the end of the day, but no, I think it's more about being strategic. Like you were saying and do making smart moves. It's like playing chess, you know, it's like making smart yeah. moves, set yourself up properly, do the right things. You can work hard when you need to work hard. There are times that you will need to do that. You know, 
Yes, and also like you're mentioning quiet quitting. I think that's really a big difference between working for someone else and working for yourself. Right. Uh, if you work for someone else, sometimes you just have to work hard because it's mm -hmm. your job. And right. then you want to consider whether you want to keep this job or like do the bare minimum or whatever, you know, make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. If you are in your own business, it's a whole different game because you're not working for someone else. And right. at the end of the day, no one is really judging whether you work hard enough or not. Uh, the only thing that matters at the end of the day is like, do you have your paycheck? Uh, is your business going to survive? Can you pay your rent or your mortgage or, you know, your bills yeah. basically. And it's, it's a whole different way because if you have a job, you have a salary and you work to keep that salary basically. Right. And someone tells you what to do. If you're right. building your own business, you have to find out what to do. It's completely different. Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, this has been fun. I want to ask you a couple fun questions and then we'll wrap this up. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all this. And um, you said a lot of really good things in there. I think for anybody that's, you know, looking into the entrepreneur space or wanting to create something, mm -hmm. you offered a lot without me even saying offer some advice. You gave a lot of really good advice. So I just want you to know that. So, but I have I'll a couple, Thank yeah, you. <laughs> I've got a couple fun questions I want to ask you. And uh, so all these right. will just be fun. Nothing to do with work, anything like that. So, um, all right. So you mentioned that you love cheese. Yeah. Do you love friend. all cheese? Do you love all cheese, or is there like one you just really, really like? Well, because I live abroad, I pretty much love all cheese because the ones that I really, really like, I can't get my hands on because they oh, are gotcha. like local French cheese. Yeah. Gotcha. So, gotcha. I like, <laughs> yeah. I like cheese too. I like it too. All right. What is your? Uh, let's see. Because I see all your books back there. Now we talked about this last time we were on the chat. So what is your? And you may maybe you have more than one, but maybe one book that stands out to you that you feel like has been the most helpful in your journey. Okay, so that would be a lot, but I will go with this one, which is The Language of Emotion by Carla McLaren. Um, ah. she's, this is an incredible book if you haven't read it. It's even like a handbook, you know, like when yeah. you have all, all the little notes. I see all your notes stuff. in there. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, I've had her on my podcast too, so you can head over to my YouTube channel. There's an interview Fine. with her. She's incredible. And like this has been very, very um, excellent in understanding your emotions, why you have the emotions that you do and how they support you. Um, yeah. It's not immediately business related. So I'm going to give you a second one that's more like immediately business related. Well, that one's good too, because I think you need to deal with that in life too. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, I hope she'd be a better business leader. Yeah, this is the new edition of it. Uh, it. There was a previous version, so I, it was previously called Chillpreneur, so I used to recommend the other version. Uh, this is Chill and yeah. Prosper by Denise DeField Thomas. Uh, she's absolutely right. excellent. She's my money mentor. She has a, an online group uh, program. She's called Money Bootcamp, where you learn about money mindset. And she really like is all about working smarter and um, adjusting your mindset so that your business can be successful. I can safely say that I wouldn't be where I am nowadays without her. So that's super important. So yeah. Awesome. Two books well, thank you. you for sharing. This is my favorite part. We get a whole book list on this part of the podcast. I got some, somebody told me three books yesterday and I, or maybe it was more than three, but I knew one of them and see, I didn't know anything about those. So it's always helpful because if other people are looking for resources or if I want to find a book, I just ask you guys right. what you're reading. See? So yep. awesome. All right. One last question I want to ask you. So when you're not doing your French and coaching and doing all your things. What do you like to do for fun? What's the other fun oh. stuff in your life? Um, I like astrology a lot. Oh. It's something yeah. for the longest time until the age of more than 35, I was absolutely not a believer. I just yeah. didn't see how it could work. But one day I just, you know, I was hanging out on TikTok and I stumbled upon a couple of videos and I was like, wait, what? And <laughs> I, <laughs> I fell into that rabbit hole and it's, it's really, really fascinating because, um, like, to quote Chris Brennan, who's like one of the most influential astrologers of our time, astrology shouldn't work, but it does. Interesting. I just finished and, coaching a client that was an astrologer. I just wrapped up yesterday right. with her. Yeah, very dynamic person. Yes, and it's it's absolutely fascinating the uh, the work with archetypes, the patterns, and so on. So, yeah, yeah that's very cool. something I'm definitely into. And I, I do a lot of. Um, personal growth stuff, um, as you can see with all the yeah. books. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, I like energy work a lot. I actually have some um, energy work videos on my YouTube channel to help people with learning French. Um, okay. I do a lot of meditation. I have meditation yeah. tracks as well on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. That's awesome. I, me- I do remember you mentioning that to me. We talked about that, I think, when we were off. So good for you. That's right. awesome. Yes, and meditation is so good. I studied that too. So I believe it's it's definitely a, a helpful and beneficial yeah. in a lot of ways. So That's absolutely super helpful. Like It's incredible how versatile it is and the, the number of ways that you can adjust it to help you in your life. Um, a lot of people would tend to think that it's just, you know, sitting there and thinking of nothing, which is a way of meditating, but it's, there are so many more options. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you are awesome. Love what you're doing. I, you. I know you mentioned this earlier in the show, but I want you to say it one more time. So if our audience, because there may be somebody out there going, Hey, I want to take up French again, or maybe learn it. Where do we want to send them? Yes, yeah, so my website is frenchfrancy.net, so you will find all the information there, and you can always book a 30-minute uh, free call. It's called French, Ap- French Coaching Application Call, right? Uh, you can get actually directly there, frenchfrancy.net slash call, um, but also you will find all the information um, about my programs on frenchfrancy.net slash accelerator. That's my group program. Or there's also frenchfrancy.net slash transformation, which is uh, my one-on-one program. But, you know, you'll find all the links in the website. If you just go to frenchfrancy.net, you can navigate to the different pages. I think it's relatively easy to find. All right, perfect. We'll make sure, too, when it goes out, we'll get all the links on there so that everybody knows how to find you. I mean, I'm I'm available. You can always comment on my YouTube videos or leave me a comment anywhere. I will most likely answer, um, you know, there's a chance that the algorithm will hide them from me, but generally I do manage to answer. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and being authentic and real and telling us all the good stuff and, you know, the challenging stuff too. I'm always about being real and saying, cause it, this is a journey that we're on and there's always, there's always the good and the bad, mostly good, but there's always the other stuff we got to talk about too. So thank you so much for that. It's important to not gloss it over. Yes, because we, we paint a, you know, a picture that people won't be able to find in real life. And I think it's important to, so people know what to expect. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you. you for having me, Jennifer. Absolutely. And so we do want to say to our listeners, of course, if you enjoy our show, check us out on Facebook, give us a rating on iTunes. Also head on over to our YouTube page, click subscribe. And with that, I want to leave you guys with a final thought. In order to live the extraordinary, you must start and every start begins with a decision. You guys take care, be safe, be kind to one another. We will see you next time.